my feeling that this is one of the best sets I've ever seen. It's on a conveyor belt system. In the old days, we would all, there'd be a lot more guys here all carrying scenery on and all that, a bit more labour intensive. The way we do it now, it makes life so much easier and so much quicker. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, like any production like this, but the point is that this is a jigsaw puzzle that everybody who works here has been redoing over and over again for most of their working lives, so it's ceased to become a problem. <laughs> In 1974, I think it was, Sir John Tooley sent for me and he said, you know, we need a new bohem, we'd like you to do one. And I said, oh, well, what a responsibility. And he said, but it must be traditional and it's got to last three or four seasons and it's got to be the La Bohème that everybody will recognise and will come back to. Well, now it's in its 38th year. Um, it hasn't done badly. We've got the props department upstairs, which is absolutely fantastic, world-class prop people. And they've been down and had their little, added their touches to it. And, and it's such a magical set, you know, it's got a life of its own. Sometimes we only have five or ten minutes to focus anything up to 200 lamps, which is where the long-term experience of the people who've worked here for years comes in. Is that a bubble just go? Oh. It's like, go, and everybody just starts. So you get about 20 people focusing lamps all on top of each other, but it works. So this is, this is sort of like conceptually inside the cafe, so this is warm, and that's cold. So, ladies and gentlemen, could you take your positions for the top of Act 2, please? I was working with Julia Trevelyan Omen, a wonderful, wonderful designer, wonderful lady, but she really needed reference, historical reference. So it was the v &A every day, 24-7. I like very much the staging. I mean, all the sets also around, and, and it, it all looks so, so authentic, so real. The costumes also, everything. It's like, I don't know, like a movie or like a play. I remember a cafe on the South Bank where there was a billiard table in a raised section, and we couldn't find the reference, and Julia was not very happy to do it. And then suddenly somebody found the reference for me, and I was thrilled to bits about that. I just wanted Musette to have something to play with. You know, she hits the balls, and she plays with her um, chalk, and she blows the chalk off the cue. It's all a bit naughty. In this John Copley production, I like very much that Musetta is coming with a little dog. <laughs> it could be like some Paris Hilton character, so understandable too. I did a production once with a Musetta who had her own dog, and she put it in stage level, and the dog just zoomed across to Mimi and bit her on the ankle. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> Museum. We go into our restaurant mm -hmm. and we just sit there and eat. Yeah. <laughs> and it's real food. It's real chicken mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and, and, and salami. And, and, oysters, and, and, well, the oysters are actually oyster shells with some banana. Uh, well, cuts, they had uh, the own real oysters in for one of the rehearsals. Really? Yeah. It look, no, it look, well, Did you eat it? Look, no, I didn't because he said, I don't eat it. <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> and it's a brilliant, brilliant production. You know, the whole opera is a favorite scene. I enjoy standing backstage and watching the people, my colleagues on stage. They, they just took away from you. <laughs> so many people have done this. I mean, going back to, you know, Angela Georgia, well, Kirita Kanawa. It's very important. I mean, we've got Rolando Viozoni here, but I've worked on it with Domingo and Pavarotti, uh, Carreras. It's the classic poem, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>